Hello and welcome to News Click. We have had just the Israeli election results come in. We are going to discuss with Professor Rajaz Ahmed what are the implications of these elections. Do you see that Netanyahu seems to have emerged as the leading candidate for the prime ministership again? So he is going to lead this coalition from all accounts. Of course, it may take a little time. Do you see this coalition that has emerged around Netanyahu is more right-wing or as right-wing as last time? Well, uh, he, he has won. Gantz has conceded. So um, there's no doubt that Netanyahu is going to be uh, laying the claims with about 65 seats. Uh, 61 is the required number. So the coalition is in place. Uh, and he probably will be called to form the government. Um, the coalition is basically the same as uh, it has been in the past. What has happened with the coming of Trump to the U.S. presidency is that the U.S. is now allowing Israel to implement its maximum positions. And that is what Netanyahu has been doing with the permission of the U.S. government. Uh, annexation of Eastern East Jerusalem, annexation of the Jordan, um, the Americans recognizing um, the whole of Jerusalem as Israeli capital, um, etc. And now when uh, Netanyahu says that he is going to annex parts of the West Bank, certainly all the ones where there are these colonies, which are called settlements, whatever they're called, settlements or whatever, um, the uh, uh, Pompeo was asked by a Democratic senator during the hearings, Will the United States allow Israel to unilaterally annex the West Bank? Pompeo refused to say yes or no. In other words, yes, we will. So what I'm saying is that Netanyahu is now in a position to implement the maximum program that he has and all these extreme, so-called extreme right-wing parties have, those extreme right-wing parties, and Likud is no less extreme. So I would say that um, the, the, the results are unsurprising. Um, it is essentially the same coalition. Um, the difference between him and his opposition was extremely minimal. Uh, that's, that's very important to understand so far as Palestine is concerned. Yes. Gantz is the general who led those horrible, horrible invasions, two big invasions of Gaza. Yes. He is the one who is saying settlements are a spiritual asset. They cannot be touched. We have Israeli law has to be implemented throughout the um, Jordan Valley. The border between, um, between Jordan and Judea Samaria, as they call the West Bank, is our border. This got this gas. So this is a recognition of both sides that annexation is now legal, virtually, particularly after the last change of their constitution, which had said only right to self-determination is of the Jewish population, no, no other section. So all of this is now from de facto, we are slowly going to move to, not in international law, but in terms of Israeli law, to a de jure an annexation. Is that what we are looking at? Well, certainly, uh, I'd say two things about it. One is, 
like yes international law as a body of uh, documents is in conflict with this but fact of the matter is that nobody no european power not russia not china not india nobody has objected to their assertion of sovereignty over the jordan or over jerusalem or protested against this statement and so on so there is an absolutely international consensus supporting israel so that's one thing i would say the other thing i would say um is that i you know i have said this in the past that when the neocons said that we will need 30 years to restructure the middle east the central element in it which they never said is that the israel israelis would need a couple of decades at least to annex the whole of palestine and in order to make that possible they had to create mayhem all around israel and therefore give israel a security cordon to proceed with that and in that i think they have been very successful the united states has very successfully why we think of conventional warfare and victory and loss in terms of conventional warfare but in terms of their objectives they have been very successful israel has a completely free hand according to the west the entire west they it can do anything it wants so um, in short after these elections i'm expecting the annexation um, and various other uh, designs of, of the israelis to move very fast okay leaving out right now the israeli situation we'll come back to it and what happens to a formal apartheid state in the 21st century coming leaving that out and i remember about 3 or 4 months back you had said that whatever happens in uh, west asia the you are sympathies today are with the palestinians because you don't see any improvement on that count on contrary on the contrary to the worst but geostrategically geostrategically if you look at the israel us particularly the us us seems to have emerged weaker in west asia than say what you said in 90s 1990s that if you say they have destroyed iraq true libya true syria true but at the same time they have not emerged strategically as stronger in west asia would you say their ability to destroy states is much greater than their ability to control the aftermath or certainly they you know they <laughs> they cannot control the aftermath in the conventional sense as you know the point is that once you have destroyed a society and a state that state is not able to defy so no matter how weak in conventional terms us may appear fact of the matter is that neither libya nor iraq nor syria and now that iran is surrounded the way it is surrounded not iran not qatar nobody can you know defy the united states so it it may have become weaker but they have become infinitely weaker than they were so in in, in that sense the balance of force um the great game in town is of the arabia and the uae and israel okay. and you, this is this is the position that they that they have so in this new map the only coherent power is this and the beleaguered iraq what about turkey 
What about Turkey? I mean, Turkey has never played any significant role in, in relation to Israel, uh, in relation to Palestinians. It has always had a certain military relationship with Israel, which it still has. Rhetorically, there's a lot of Islamism, you know, rhetorically, but its relationship with Israel is very, is very good, commercial and military. So you see uh, Iran as the only major uh, resistance to the U.S., Saudi, Israeli politics in the region. Yes, but their resistance has come down to fight for survival. Defense, completely defense. Yes. So they're, they're entirely on the defense. So particularly because of this new, very deep strategic alliance, between Saudi Arabia, Egypt, UAE, and Israel. Israel has a completely free mind. So I really fear very much what is going to happen in Palestine, given the fact that Palestine basically has no leadership. Particularly with the way the Palestine Authority has been behaving, right. completely right. supine in front of That's Israel. Right. And so yesterday, um, they say we should break our security cooperation with Israel. This is their reaction to uh, Netanyahu saying, yes, we will annex large parts of the West Bank. So, you know, uh, you, that, that, that's the other side of the situation. You know, um, what is a long term prospect? in the 21st century now of an apartheid state. Do you think, of course, we can always say in the long run, every, we are all dead, but do you think that in the medium term, there is a possibility that Israel will cannot maintain this for too long? No, there, there are two things we say. In the long run, we are dead. In the long run, revolution will succeed. You take it. <laughs> That's why I said the medium term. I didn't even say either the long or the short term, Vijas. It's for you to decide which will be So far as long, long term is concerned. Look, um, uh, obviously, historically speaking, um, apartheid states, settler colonial states um, cannot survive forever. Uh, the, it's, especially the ones that are established at this point in history. Um, so, historically speaking, as a good Hegelian, I would say this is going to not last, um, perhaps not more than 50 years, perhaps not more than 100 or 200 years, whatever, but it's not going to last. Um, but as of now, with the whole there being no resistance for all the states who could be mount a challenge being vanquished, Palestinians not having been able to um, have a coherent leadership and a coherent strategy, uh, we do not, in the foreseeable future, see um, any great change in the overall situation in the region. And so, amazingly, the only resistance coming is still from the Palestinian people, from no other Arab quarter, not from their leadership. Hijaz, on somewhat, shall we say, uh, somber note, uh, we shall conclude our discussions today. I hope that next time we can take up the other issue which is there. Ukraine, Central and Eastern Europe, and what is the quote-unquote great game there that's going on, particularly as we see official fascists coming into play in Ukraine. Of course, they have been in the government for quite some time. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Ajaz. We'll see you then. Thank you for watching NewsClick. Do continue to watch our shows and also visit our website.